Okay, this is a continuation video on the solutions for this FFT exam review problem. Okay, so what we've made it to so far is we've looked at deriving the butterfly equations and we've shown how to apply this for k equal 4 and for k equal 6. And now we're just going to look at our work and you know, we've only done two butterflies, but we can look at our work and generalize that on how many complex multiplications and how many complex adds are needed to merge this 8-point FFT with the 16-point FFT. Okay, so going to our work, we see here this is what we came up with. All right, so this is two butterflies out of how many would we have? We would have eight butterflies, right? So, considering the butterflies one at a time, all right, let's look here with highlighting green. I have two lines coming in at x4, so that means I have one add. One complex add at x4. Okay, and then I have this w that shows up on the k equal 4 butterfly, and so that would be um, one complex multiply there. Okay. Alright, then for the bottom half of the butterfly, I still have the one multiply, but that was done to take care of both the top half of the butterfly and the bottom half of the butterfly. So I don't have any additional multiplies based on the bottom half of the butterfly, but I do have another place where two lines come together. And so that gives me, instead of just one add, I have two complex adds for the k equal 4 stage. All right, so if I look at k equal 6, I come to the exact same conclusion. I have two adds, one complex multiply. Okay, so if I have eight, eight of these butterflies, and each has two adds, that would give me a total of 16 complex adds. And eight complex multiplies for this stage where we merge two eight-point DFTs to one 16-point DFT. Okay? <clears throat> so the next question is, you know, we've answered this one. We have uh, 16 complex multiplies and 8, I'm sorry, backwards, 8 complex multiplies and 16 complex adds for the answer on part D. Okay, so the next question is, if I have 16 point DFT that I'm trying to calculate, okay, how many stages does it take to keep using decimation in time back to the beginning to fully flesh out the diagram? Okay, well, we know that it's, it's logarithmic, okay? We're dividing by two at each stage. So two to the number of stages is equal to 16, so there are alpha equals four stages. Okay, and so to answer the next question, you really need to just know what happens, all right? And we've, we've gone through it. Each stage has the same number of complex adds and complex multiplies. Okay, so we know what it was for the fourth stage, and so the other three stages have the same. Okay, so that gives us our total operation count. So total number of adds, okay, it's going to be four stages times 16, okay, and then um, the total number of multiplies is going to be four stages times eight. Okay. All right, so that's the n log base two of n is what we would get in general for adds. Okay, log base two of 16 is four. n is equal to 16. Okay, these are complex adds, by the way. And then for multiplies, uh, this would be n over 2 times the log base 2 of n 
on the total number of multiplies on an endpoint FFT. Okay, so that answers, we're, we're back all the way up here, that answers part F. Okay, the last one <clears throat> I asked you, determine the order of the inputs for an overall 16 point FFT. So let me show you what I'm thinking here. Okay, I'm thinking that what I've got is this block diagram that's, or this big block that's representing the 16 point FFT. So that's got all the signal flow connections and coming out are the um, DFT coefficients or the DFT values from 0 to 15. Okay, so my question for you is, can you figure out, you know, I need 16 of these, 1, 2, 3, Okay. Can you figure out the input side on this 16-point DFT? Okay, and so the way we look at this is the, you know, we talked about this in class, is bit-reversed indexing. Okay, so I start, and I start counting in binary. You get the idea. We'll go out, out to where all four digits have at least one one in them. Okay, so zero, one, one, one. All right, that's close enough. All right, of course, on an exam, if I ask this, I want you to calculate everything. <coughs> but then, this is the regular bit ordering as we increment a counter, for example. What would happen if we reverse the digits? Okay, so I'm going to put the reverse digits in green. Okay, reverse all zeros, you get zero. Then this would be one zero zero zero, which is you know eight, and then the next one would be zero one zero zero, and then one one zero zero, and then zero zero one zero. So you see what I'm doing is I'm reversing everything. One zero one zero. From there you can calculate the input order to a 16-point DFT. All right, so this is zero, this is eight, this is four, this is 12, this is two, and so forth, and so on. All right, so that's what I meant on part G for this review problem. I'd expect you to fill that all the way out on an exam. Okay, so there, there you have it. There's the kind of problem you would expect for an FFT algorithm question on exam two.